A recent survey has revealed that 75% of UK children now spend less time outdoors than prison inmates. But all of that could be about to change if a new kind of school from Scandinavia catches on. They're called forest schools and they're aimed principally at early years and primary school children, where all of the teaching takes place outdoors in the open air. Simon O'Brien reports. Now, I'm about to sound like an old fuddy-duddy and I make no apology for it. When I was a lad, we spent our whole time climbing trees and messing in the park, unsupervised. But these days, it seems, the children are ever more enclosed, just staring at screens. Well, here in Liverpool, some children have been allowed to break free. These children are all at school, preschool to be precise. This is not a day out or an outdoor session. These trees are their classroom. The school does not have a building. Their walls, and therefore their boundaries, are marked out by red and white tape. Is it fun getting muddy? Do you like it, Ella? <laughs> this is not some crackpot one-off idea. Forest schools are a Scandinavian concept, which has become more and more popular in the UK. Nature to Nurture in Croxteth Park, which is based on the forest school model, is rated outstanding by Ofsted. It also has recently been voted National Preschool of the Year. <laughs> the school is the brainchild of nursery practitioner Julie White. She had the idea while she was recovering from a hip replacement operation. I used Croxteth Country Park to learn to walk again and it just inspired me. Um, I really felt connected to the outdoors for the first time in my life. I wanted to use nature to nurture people's well-being and that's kind of how it grew. We started doing birthday parties, family sessions, parent and toddler sessions and then in 2013 uh, there was a lot of talk about outdoor nurseries so I thought can I do it and I'd rather fail than not try. <laughs> the difficult part was getting the parents to buy into the idea. She's, she's thriving academically really and more... Marie's three-year-old daughter Ella helped convince her that she'd made the right decision. She loves it and I'm quite surprised if I'm honest because I was apprehensive. I did worry about what she'd be like in the cold, what she'd be like with the mud and the dirt. I think Ella has now learned to adapt to that. This morning, for instance, it was cold. She looked out the window and she said, oh, Mum, I think I need more layers today. Well, I think that's so clever that she's able to do that. Nicole's daughter, Bella, struggled with her confidence in mainstream school, but has really taken to the outdoor life. Started coming here three days a week and she just absolutely loved it. She's out in all weathers and is doing all sorts of things, like the climbing up trees and things. Well, she's learning to make her own choices. She's becoming very independent. So it's very child-led and she really enjoys that. But let's not take the word of the teachers and parents. Let's see if the kids themselves are enjoying it. I remember the stick was once voted as the best toy in the world. This then is Toy Superstore. This is the point. Look at that. Up on the logs, balancing, just having fun, but at the same time, Learning all those important decision-making processes. Amazing. We don't interfere in the children's play at all. We stand back and we make our observations from what we see. Um, the, the, the best learning comes from them just playing. So we're not sitting there doing any formal learning. The learning is the environment and playing with the children, the peers. When they're walking across that log over there, <laughs> it's a good height, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and they do fall off, but you know, that's the benefit of risk. So they know what they're capable of doing. And you learn through trial and error, risk and challenge. 
and that's what we want them to do. We want them to know that they can keep themselves safe. Absolutely everything is done outdoors, including lunch breaks and toilet trips. The problem with a lot of children now is they're leading a very sedentary lifestyle um, and they're not getting the physical development they need very, very early on. And if you can develop children physically, then it will help with their academic abilities later on. So I'm going to initialise them from tomorrow morning. But just because teachers, parents and children are happy doesn't mean that it actually works. Academics from Liverpool Hope University have recently started a study into whether the children at Nature to Nurture are deriving genuine benefits from being outdoors. We know that they're gaining in confidence, we know that they're gaining in their communication skills, but we need to know what is actually going on rather than just what we hope is going on. We have people from health sciences, we also have people from arts and humanities, says myself, from education. We need to know why and what really works, rather than believing it just works. Yeah, so it's about not, it's not about opinion, it's yes. about scientific fact. Yeah. Are you going to put these around your arm, yeah. Yeah. And this is going to tell us how much running around you are doing. To record their movements, the children have been fitted with accelerometers. Batman might have called them something different. They're superhero belts. They've also been filmed to analyse their behaviour and interviewed about their levels of happiness. What do you think your friends like doing here? Um, playing. Several weeks later, and it was time to see if the early academic analysis would give the thumbs up to Woodland Education. They've created and found a formulated AM seesaw. Yes. With things from the environment around them. Tom's examining the videos the team has filmed of the kids at play. He's actually looking at some of the clips that show the children engaging with each other. They're exploring, they're using props, they're actually concentrating for a long time. This is self-directed. It's not something that a practitioner has told them mm. to do this. They are enjoying that. And you can see, to actually collaborate in a group of what? One, two, three, four, five children at this age is actually advanced. Yeah. The UK guidelines for physical activity mm -hmm. are that children under five do 180 minutes of physical activity per day. Kat and Becky's accelerometer study has also produced encouraging results. Traditionally, only 10% of preschool children achieve the recommended levels of physical activity. But our outdoor explorers regularly exceed the national guidelines. We can say consistently that in this country, in early childhood settings, children are, you, are levelling at two, which is low to three moderate levels of well-being and involvement in their own activity. In forest nursery, we are finding that the children are hitting four to five, which is high to very high levels, both of involvement and well-being. Early reports then suggest that playing in the woods scores better than playing in the classroom. So the initial results make everything that we've been doing you know, really worthwhile. I've spent years kind of watching how the children play and engage and I, I've been desperate to get the universities to come down and be able to capture what it is that I can see. So, so yeah, I'm glad it, it feels like all my work has paid off. Filthy, dirty, muddy, unruly, largely unsupervised, no wonder these kids can't wait to come back tomorrow. You know, it takes me back to my past, and it might just be the future. Whether it's in the Strictly Ballroom or the Olympic Stadium, amputees are in 